you know, you cross that Edmund Pettus Bridge, you know, Selma to Montgomery, severely beaten. But all through that time and to this day, uh, you have maintained a commitment to nonviolence. When many others in, that, in the movement at the time, and I was kind of of age during that time, coming of age and of age, and I saw people turn away from a nonviolent path. What kept you on it? Well, before getting involved with the sit-ins, the Freedom Ride, um, the March on Washington, the March from Selma to Montgomery, we studied. We studied. We just didn't wake up one morning and say, we're going to go and sit in, or stand in at theaters, or that we're going to march. We studied what Gandhi attempted to do in South Africa, yeah. what he accomplished in India. We studied Thoreau and civil disobedience. We studied the great religions of the world, small group of students in Nashville. And many of us grew to accept nonviolence as a way of life, as a way of living. And then we start talking about the beloved community. And, and I used to think that the only part of that beloved community was within the struggle, within the movement itself. But I've grown to see it as much larger. But it's this idea, this concept, that you respect the dignity and the worth of every human being. And it doesn't matter whether someone is black or white, Latino, Asian American, a Native American, straight or gay. We are people, we are human beings. And I accept because of my, I guess my faith and my religious background, that is a spark of divinity in every human being. And you should respect that. And you don't have a right to destroy it. 